It is awesome. Oh, hey, Andrew. Well, we love you too, so it's okay. <laughs> uh oh, we've already got kids crashing down here. All right. What does she need? Let's get it. Scared of what? <laughs> what you scared of? <laughs> Sorry. All right. Well, it is Tuesday, and by the looks of it, Joseph has finished up his bridal joints today. So I'm not exactly sure what we're going on to. Probably like the mount, it looks like. He looks plain. But anyways, you can catch us here Monday through Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern, and you can catch Mary May on Twitch at 1 p.m. Eastern doing wood carving. And then also tomorrow at 7.30 p.m., Women of Woodworking will have a special live. I've started doing a live over there on Wednesdays and had a lot of fun last week. So, well, you, want, you want to come get started, uh, I can tag out okay. and get her up. So, right. whoop, excuse me. All right. So, got the two halves of the rockers together. So now I have to join the two. So um, I guess essentially it would be something like this, and then two rails in between. And there'll be there will be one on the bottom, but it's um, it's a different different. Um, once I get these set up, then it'll tell me the uh, measurements for the bottom one. So right now, um, I don't think when I made my full size drawing, I did like a top view or a top through the seat view of exactly what this dimension looks like. On my mock-up, um, which is this seat, this is the seat off the mock-up, uh, laid out, you know, what it was going to be in real life. So I should be able to take those lines on the bottom of my seat, position these in space, and it'll tell me where these go, hopefully. So um, these being smaller at the top and wider at the bottom gives me a little bit of a, um, it's a little tricky to hold them in position. So I got some double sided tape on top here um, it's I use it all the time it's um, it's really good for you know quickly holding pieces in place um, I, I like um, let's see if I can figure out the brand um, I think this one's from Lee Valley um, it's uh, it's not See if I can do this without Katie showing me where I am in space. So it's, it does have some fibers in it. It's not carpet tape, and it's not um, obvious the the strands in it. But it's not the clear stuff either. I really like this stuff. It holds. I mean, I've even used this for um, routing templates. You know, doing something you know pretty light, it'll hold a piece in place. So hopefully, it'll hold these rockers in place. All I have to do is hold it quickly, um, because what happens when I try to stand it up? Now that that holds in place. Normally, or having the weight to the side, it can potentially tilt. So we'll see. See if it work. If it cooperates with me. Let's see, let's see what's here. I think we got her down. <laughs> Sorry about that, y'all. I'm scared. As soon as yeah. we hit live, it's like, knock, knock, knock. Yeah, so that's what it's doing right here, is it, it wanted to just fall over. So, I find working by myself in the shop a good bit. Um, it's kind of like another little set of hands to quickly hold something in position. Probably out of the 
be right a second, but I won't be there. No, you're good. Mm. Yeah, if you have any questions, be sure to ask. <clears throat> Tell us where you're from, what you're working on, if you're able to work on anything. So that double side tape, once you, I'm probably gonna jinx myself saying <laughs> this one is gonna fall off on me. <laughs> once you put pressure on it, it's um it is pressure, pressure activated or pressure sensitive or whatever you call it. So you have to kind of give it a give it a push and it'll it'll stick pretty good. And ideally, if I had my seat made already, it would probably be better. Um, it's not crucial because I was fairly, uh, pretty careful when marking out this mock-up. Um, I mean, I, so you're saying you should have done the seat first? I'm saying that I guess in a perfect world, I would have my seat for mm -hmm. at least the blank that I'm actually going to be using. Just because, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but things end up, <laughs> things happen when I'm, when I'm marking stuff out or transferring and as careful as I am, um, one, one is a real life, one is a real life thing and it's the actual piece I'm using and one is hopefully very close and should be the same, but you know, things just, you never know. So I like to, I, I guess, ideally I would have had my seat blank, done some really careful measurements on um, where I wanted to end up and then laid it out. But this should totally be fine. Cause honestly, all it's gonna do is change where in space my frame is under my seat. And if it's, an inch and an eighth instead of an inch and three sixteenths overhang. It's not going to be the end of the world. Um, the seat isn't custom for anybody. Um, it's it's made for you know. This is truly just kind of proven that the design works. And I mean, on another level up from the up the mock up, but it you know I'm not I'm not too worried about it. So we'll see if I. Live your regret, regret that. Mm -hmm. Just not saying this ever happened before, but um, there. Andrew said those are some really great lines. I'd have to agree. Thank you, Andrew. I appreciate that. Joe's, it's like one of his signatures is really nice lines. And like really straight. Are kind of in between straight and curvy. You haven't done anything super curvy, probably since your sh stool, shop stool. Um, oh no, it's been well, yeah. man. Tracy's yeah. chairs were yeah, yeah. You did curvy. the. You're like, hold on, I just <laughs> curved. <laughs> I just steam bent this. Oh like, yeah, I forgot about that. Tree part. limb. No. I did forget about that. <clears throat> um, so last year, Joseph was working on a commission for a black walnut dining chair with arms and. Uh, steam bent the solid piece of black walnut to be the arms and it was quite an adventure and I did a couple videos on it so if you go to my channel on YouTube um, Katie Thompson and Katie Kozar Thompson might pop it up but you can find the <laughs> some some failed attempts and then also the success and we learned a lot and it was really interesting yeah so. I'd really really like to do another not necessarily that chair, but another bin because it was that so fun. God, face awful. the challenge. It was just you know bending. I don't. You kind of feel like a magician a little bit. Yeah, watching it bend, especially <laughs> on the time lapse video. You guys have to go look at it. It just looks like somebody bending like a piece of rubber. It was anything but. Yeah, I, and probably for us since we saw it not do so well several times. <laughs> they were like, yes, finally. Yes, success. <laughs> Andrew said, I followed along with that adventure as well. An adventure is a good way to describe <laughs> that. 
Lots yeah. of lots of ups and downs, harrowing moments. Uh-huh. Cranks breaking and cords snapping and you snapped the metal um Yeah, the the backing strap. Yeah, backing strap. About thirty seconds into a bin one day. So yeah. and again these live streams now we are recording and adding to YouTube so if you go to Joseph Thompson Woodworks on YouTube you can see all of last week's lives live from this week and going forward so if there's something you missed or you have a question you can catch up on it So for this, you are kind of specking out. Yep. So we're just gonna go more like more than ten in next. Or yep. So what I'm gonna do? Um, <laughs> pull this pencil. Um, <laughs> so on my on my model, I think I did a half lap, which I think in the at the time I was like, oh, this would just be quick and. Um, this right here. Yeah, and. You know, thinking that's probably not what I'm going to do. That not what I'm going to do on the real piece. It's really not a bad option. Um, you know, let's just say, for instance, a bridle joint here would remove too much material out of this rail. Um, you know, you would end up with a thin little, even a single bridle joint. Let's just say it'll be a thin little piece of material in the middle here, um, and two little tenons, I guess, or. Anyway, I don't, I don't, what, I don't know what you call them on bridle joints, but the two little um, outside pieces. So really, it'd be pretty. This piece would be pretty weak, even though once it's together, it's really not about the strength of one part. It, it's kind of this and the pieces running um, side side to side are kind of a unit at that point. Um, so not a bad. I mean. Not, not that it would be terrible, but half lap, you know, you're removing half the material from one piece and half the material from the other. Not a bad option. Um, you know, I, I think what I'm kind of thinking for this is a mortise and tenon. And while I'm saying it, you know, I, yeah, it's, it's strong. It's probably, probably my best, the, the best option. So that's why I'm going to do it. Um, definitely not the the simplest option. Um, you know, half lap. I could really lay this piece on there, figure out where it's going, mark it out. Be done. Um, for this mortise and tenon, I'm going to have to establish shoulders. It's going to be an angled mortise and an angled well, be an angled shoulder on on the tenon piece. But the mortise, the mortise will be angled through this side rail or through this top rail. So a little bit of a little bit of difficulty in that. Um, nothing, nothing we can't handle. And I think overall, it's probably my my best option. So that's kind of when I'm weighing out joinery. Um, you know, even when it's an aesthetic choice. Strength is, you know, ultimately where the decision is made. You know, um, you know, I, there's never really a time where I was like, "Oh, that that look has to drive the decision." That's that's not usually the case. Um, I usually try to find something that's appealing, but then you know, ultimately the strength makes the decision. If it, um, you know, if there's going to be a compromise there, then it doesn't really matter how good it looks. It's, Probably not what's going to happen. So, these are in place. Now, um, I, ha I did have on my mock up these pieces, which were the pieces that ran um, on the interior. So, I had, I had a good idea of, of what, what length I wanted. I actually noticed when I was marking the or laying these up, 
I had an inch and a quarter on one side and about an inch on the other. So what that was going to do essentially was um, that, and that's a square cut on the side of the seat. They end up getting faceted with a bevel. That was going to leave me, if I did keep those dimensions on my final seat, it was going to bring the sides of these rockers a little bit too close to the edge where I was trying to, time, trying to kind of tuck them in slightly to keep them out of view. Kind of just, that's really just choice. Um, so that's why I was sitting there changing a few things. So that does change some dimensions a little bit on these pieces. Um, I got these pretty much marked out before, before we started. I don't want to be out of view, but I do need to transfer these lines. Sure. Um, well, you get set up where you yeah. need to be and I'll adjust. Yeah, I just, um, just basically needed to transfer these lines mm. down the side. Yeah, so this is um, th then the question uh, going back to the Morrison tenon. Um, those of you familiar with a domino or festival domino, um, this would be a pretty pretty great application for that. I don't own one. The point of that was is it's a floating tenon, which basically you have you know this part and this part and this part that goes in between, or down here that goes in between. And um, you can kind of cut them right to fit in between or fit, them in, fit each other and not have to worry about adding the tenon. Um, and then you, then you cut the tenon in each part. That's the simplest way because essentially I'm just taking this part, laying it on there, marking out where it goes in between, and then cutting it. And then in this top rail cutting a mortise and then into this piece cutting a mortise and putting a floating tenon in there um, to make to make the joint normally that's not the floating tenon isn't quite as strong as a live tenon which a live tenon is me actually cutting the, the tenon out of this piece and making this an, a continuous piece for this um, you know I, if, if, my, if I was using a tenon for here to there, I would worry about the strength or um, over time of that, lie, of that floating tenon. Because it's trapped in between these two rails, I really, I can't see it being a negative. So for my own sanity, I think that's probably what I'm gonna do. And then I get to use the multi-router too, which I've already told you when I can make an excuse to use it, I like to do so. So, yeah, I laid, like I said, I laid these out over um, off of the other pieces and then kind of changed my mind. So what I'll do is actually mark these from what I know is real life now, which is where I think I want them to end up. Um, so. That being said, if I move over here, am I gonna be too far out of the way? No, go. You right, you're so. need to go. I think I finally found the spot. Okay. I've moved around a couple times and this I think <clears throat> and that way I can adjust in and out very easy. So tomorrow is Q and A day, so hopefully We'll get some more good questions about business and um, marketing and owning a small business and woodworking, design, whatever it is y'all want to know about, come with your questions. It's one of my favorite, probably my favorite thing to do out of the, the lives is Q&A, just because you never know what direction the conversation is going to go. Did it move? Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> Alright, I marked my line, so I'm alright. There you go. It's 
where I need some double sided tape. I don't know where I could find any. But. <laughs> Are you out? No. Oh, okay. Thanks. Thanks, really. Any of y'all working on anything? I'd love to hear what else other people are working on if they're able to get their hands on something. I feel very lucky to have access to a shop right now. Yeah. I kind of hate to see my state of mind right now. Oh, I wasn't able to get mess. to the shop. An absolute yeah, mess. I, well, I won't even pretend. You can take a step to your right. Yeah, perfect. This is work so great for me right here. <laughs> oh boy. Lots of transferring. Lots of transferring. Now, Mary May did a whole live on how she transfers designs to wood for her wood carving. And if y'all are listening, she is on Twitch, so you could probably go back. I think that was Monday's class. Mon Mon Monday or Friday? Thursday. Anyway, she did a whole live on it, and so I'd love to go see... I need to go back and watch that because I know a few ways that she does it, but it's just one of those things. There's just like no easy way all the time. So that yeah. would be a good one to to watch if you have questions about transferring things and carving. And also, Women of Woodworking is having an amazing giveaway right now. We definitely need some more participants. So the deadline is tomorrow at 12 o'clock noon Eastern. And tomorrow is Wednesday, April 8th. But we have six different prizes that you can win. If you hop over to at Women of Woodworking, you'll find the post with all the prizes very nicely displayed on some, some logs. You can get the details and enter there, but we've got a nice spoon, we've got a pair of earrings, we've got cuffs, all kinds of really awesome stuff from some really talented women makers and sponsors. So um, hop over there because the odds are pretty good. There's not a whole lot of entries, so jump on it. back up. It is. All right. That lines right. This one's not. One more time. Good. Good, good. All right, so there's one, that's the front. So what I'll do is erase my other lines. So I don't confuse myself.
So again, I'm using, I'm going to do some floating, floating tenons. So what I'm going to do is cut, cut these right to length. Well, you've got just a few minutes left if y'all have any questions or comments. It's got warm today. Outside? Yeah. Yep. So, what I'll do is I'll cut that off and that off. And then I'll come in from the end at that angle and drill a mortise or cut a mortise. And um, I know where I am on this rail here so I can cut the mortise there as well um, so that should work out good so as long as I keep those designated that's my front <laughs> looking for the back oh, there it is. <laughs> right behind and you the back So tomorrow's Q and A Thursday. Is that Mortis and Tenon Day? Oh yeah. Must so be um, done before then. Yeah, I think I'll. These should be pretty straightforward. I'm hoping that I'll have those ready to go, and um, the one on the bottom is very similar. It's. Um, it's gonna be it's a little bit thicker um, but it'll be between these two rockers so after that these this will totally be a unit and so then I can um, what I'll probably do in the meantime is go ahead and mill up that's probably what I'll do before Thursday is um, try to have a seat milled up um, so then I'm um, starting on that seat so whether it's positioning on that seat and making sure I got that right um, and then going ahead and starting to cut the shape out of my seat and then then there's um, the final thing will be shaping the seat um, but the final part of the seat will be shaping the seat um, and also I think I mentioned in the past or a couple days ago if not yesterday of uh, um, some brass hold downs that I'm gonna gonna make um, that'll get mortised in to the top of this rail and then that's how I'm gonna attach the seat to let it expand and contract um, they're just pieces of eighth inch inch and a half by eighth inch thick uh, brass flat stock that I'll um, drill and countersink and slot some holes to allow for expansion and contraction. Um, pretty sweet little way to attach normally a tabletop, but in this case, a seat. So, mm -hmm. that's that. So Andrew says, time flies when hanging out with you two. It's either that or the fact that I'm trying to organize over here. No, it flies for us too. We have a lot of fun. I mean, we're talking about the thing we love to do the most, which is woodworking and create. So we both are just happier than pigs in mud. Mm -hmm. Can't say what I want to say because this is a family IG Live. Gosh darn it. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> No, but it's always good conversation and there's always things you think about and talk about that someone might pick up some information or yeah or something. So All right. 
You ready for the closing ceremony? Do, 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 do. <laughs> oh, I'm losing it being isolated all the time. So. Okay. Yeah, we can close it, close the ceremony. Close the ceremony. And it's closed. So yeah, it's hard, you know, I wish you could show more of it, but you can't really see the pencil on the walnut as it is. Nope. So. Yeah. That's that. All right, well, join us tomorrow. Q&A day? Q&A day. You ready? Bring your questions. Think of some good questions for us. Um, <clears throat> we'll be here at 2 p.m. Eastern on Instagram Live. And you can watch Mary May at 1 p.m. Eastern on Twitch for some wood carving. And then tomorrow night at Women of Woodworking is having our Wednesday Live at 7.30 p.m. So be sure to join me over there. We'll announce the winners of our giveaway. Go enter our giveaway. Um, yeah. We'll just talk woodworking. I'll be here. You gonna be in the Women of Woodworking live tomorrow? I don't think so. <laughs> in the background. <laughs> I'll be in. The, I'll be back here. You can be like the news photo bomber. You know? <laughs> That's it. Mm -hmm. uh, oh boy. So. All right, y'all. Have a good afternoon, evening, morning, wherever you are. Stay well.